We want to build the number one international baseball league. Oh, what a kiss! Oh, what a kiss! Like I said, I feel blessed. The pitcher grabbed by Schlitter goes through the force of the plate. Ground ball double ball play, game, game wow. over. Wow. wow. This is a money ball, a gentlemen. Ball. And this is yeah. oh, money ball. Oh, money ball. Nothing fires me up quite like that intro. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the second episode of the Baseball United podcast, the premier voice of international baseball. I'm your host, Liam Skiffington, and today we are lucky enough to be joined by Mr. Robinson Torinos, co-owner of Baseball United, MLB veteran Robinson. Thank you so much for joining the show. It's great to see you again, man. How's everything going? Liam, how are you? Thank you for having me, uh, uh, hearing the intro and being the second guest on the podcast, it made me, it made me feel really good. Everything is great, man. I'm down here in DR watching baseball with my son, David, and, and things are really good. Very nice, man. Well, Robinson, we got a lot to cover today and I appreciate you joining the show, but first and foremost, man, I want to thank you personally for just when we were in Dubai, I shot you a message on Instagram. I don't know if you remember this or not. You responded to me. It couldn't have been quicker. You gave me your number. You told me to text you when I was at the field. I texted you when I was at the field. You came down and you gave me as much time as I possibly wanted. You were so nice. You were so willing to give your time. You were with your son, Julian, I believe. Uh, you introduced me to him. He looked like he was having a blast there. So I want to just say thank you from the bottom of my heart for doing that for me when I was out there. No, that's, I mean, we were in Dubai for one reason, Lynn, and it, it was to have a great weekend, uh, build, baseball united, and you were trying to do your job. And I mean, I was there for the same purpose. So it was easy to get back to you and talk about baseball, talk about baseball united. And I was blessed to have my son Julian there with me. So anything, I mean, I came into Baseball United to build a lead in a place it was no baseball, professional baseball. So I know I have to, we have to do a lot of work, and that's what you did back in Dubai, and that's what we're doing still right now. You know, we're working really hard every single day to build that lead and do it the right way. Let's get let's get into how you got involved into Baseball United, Robinson. How did this? Uh, marriage come together, so to speak. I like that, like that word, and you know, when we marry to something, we commit, and that's that's really a perfect word to use. You know, we I'm commit to baseball United and also to build the league and do it with the people we have in baseball United. Uh, back in August of last year, Adrian Bertre talked to me about Baseball United. I saw a little bit back in the summer when he was in Dubai doing some work with Cash and the group. I think it was around June, July, and text him and say I like, you know, what I was seeing. He told me when he he was getting back to the state, he was gonna call me and talk about it. So he did, he called me back, we talked about Baseball United, he's playing, you know, the whole idea. And, after that, John called me, did a presentation. I, I love it from day one. That's the, how I got married with Baseball United. That's, uh, by the way, that's Hall of Famer Adrian Beltre now. <laughs> that's Hall of Famer. And, uh, I hope I can be in his ceremony but, uh, this summer in July. So I was blessed enough to play with Adrian for five years in Texas. So one of the best team that I have in my career. So Robinson, when... Uh, John was giving you this presentation. What was going through your mind and what, what were you guys kind of discussing about bringing baseball to this region? Everything. He, he did the whole presentation about how Baseball United was born, you know, the vision and the goal for bringing professional baseball to, to that region and also the challenge uh, they were going to come on having the big, I call it a big dream, you know, Every time you have a big dream, you always gonna have big challenge. I'm up to big challenge, you know. I'm a guy from Venezuela, grew up far from the United States, far from being 
a, a big league player and took that challenge back in 2000 when I signed my professional contract and, and I worked my way into the big league. That's the same thing or the same way I've seen Baseball United, you know, seeing as an opportunity to uh, grow up the game I love since I was a kid and also the challenge that's uh, kind of come with that. And since day one, I've been telling John and Cash, you know, like I'm not only an investor on in Baseball United, I want to do the work. I want to be in the ground uh, doing everything I can to, to make this happen. And, a couple of days ago, I've uh, been able to have a seat in the board, you know, and be able to continue building Baseball United. And uh, I'm excited. I'm excited to to what the future hold for the league. So uh, you talk about your presentation with John Medrick. At what point did you get to experience Cash Shake in person? You know, it was in Dubai. I was no... I, I, I was... Uh, down here in DR when I did the presentation with John in September, uh, my son Dave is down here working really hard to sign as an international player. So we did the presentation. I was down here maybe to mid October. Then I flew to do I flew to Venezuela and then to Dubai. That's when I. I was able to meet Cash in person and, and go over everything. It was a busy weekend, and uh, Cash was running around everywhere. But we were there for the same purpose, you know, trying to build something really cool. And also, the way I see it, Leon, is having all the opportunity for players to reach their dream, you know. A lot of players... Uh, they don't have the opportunity in that region. That's what we're trying to do with Baseball United. We're trying to to help those players achieve their dream when they were they were a kid to play professional baseball, and and we're doing that. And I think this league is gonna have a lot of great memories of that of that kind I have when I was a kid back in Venezuela. So it takes a special type of person to just uh, wake up one day and say. I'm bringing a league, a professional baseball league, to a place it's never been before. Surely you had mm. conversations with Cash before you met him in person. What was your initial reaction to the uh, his leadership and his vision? We we need a guy like Cash, you know, to lead the whole idea of the whole, you know, the whole dream of building a league from the scratch. It's not easy, but. I mean, he surrounded himself with the right people, and, and that's huge. You know, when you're trying to build something, you can't do it alone. I mean, you have to have good people around you, people with the same vision and the same passion as you, and that's something Cash has done a really, really good job. He's finding the right people to put beside him. And also, you know, all the investors, all the guys that play, you know, the MLB veterans, and also the current players we have in our uh, team, they want to do the work. You know, it's not, it's not going to take only cash. It's not going to take John or myself. It's going to take everybody to be to build the lead. And that's what we're up to. You know, everybody's keep telling cash, you know, we, we want to be there with you. We want to work beside you and do, do the hard work because it, that's the reward. It's not like, all right, we, we're going to build a lead and five years from now, you know, you're going to send me a check and, and everything is fine. I don't think that's how you enjoy your achievement, achievement as a man, you know. The reward is on the heart, is in the process, is putting the work. And we understand that as a player. We understand it's going to take time, it's going to take a team, and we have the right team the right passion to do. And I have faith, man. I have faith uh, this is going to be a great opportunity for everybody. People we in Baseball United right now, the people is going to come next. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to continue to add value and people to continue to, to get to where we want it to be, you know, have a complete season, have all the franchise, have... Uh, 
all the players out there competing every single night to to win a championship and that's what it's about so robinson let's go into this ownership group a little, a little bit. bit certainly Sir. the most prolific ownership group in any professional sport what was your reaction when uh, you first joined on and there were hall, hall of Famers and other legends in this group? It's unbelievable, you know, when you look at, like, you put the names in front of you and you, man, I, I can be, oh, I'm here with these guys on the ownership group and, and trying to, to do something really cool for baseball and the game pretty much give us everything in our life. For me, is it's a bless. I mean, I can't take it for granted. I mean, when John and Cass told me I'm, I was in to be in the co-owner group, I feel humble enough to thank God for the opportunity. And uh, it's been it's been a roller coaster since day one, and I'm excited, man. I know we're gonna keep adding people and adding uh, value to the owners of Baseball United. And, and I'm excited to what is to come, you know? So I think you said a little while ago, correct me if I'm wrong, please. You went from, you flew from the Dominican Republic to Venezuela, then from Venezuela to Dubai? Yes, that's how, that's how I got to Dubai last year. Went from DR to Venezuela and Venezuela to Dubai, and it was cool. How long of a travel of, of an itinerary is that? It took me 23 hours to get from Venezuela to Dubai last year. Uh, do, oh I did one God. stop in Istanbul, and it was quick. It was like an hour and a half. Then I got to Dubai, but you know, when you you excited for something, uh, I feel like it was two hours of flight for me. You know, I was excited to get to Dubai, start working and get into, to put the work in. And, and that's how I feel last year, you know, and I'm excited for, for do it again this year. So when you, uh, let's go back to Dubai. When you got to Dubai, you went to the field. What was your initial, how did you feel when you saw this cricket pitch? transformed into a baseball diet. I can maybe copy what Cano say uh, to Cash last year. I mean, if you don't tell me it was a cricket stadium, I really, I was not going to know the difference. You know, they did a really good job, Cash, the team, uh, to transform the cricket stadium to a baseball diamond. It was, um, it was beautiful, man. That then look, it made me feel like, Wanted to play and be there with the guys on the field, hitting, catching ground balls, being behind the play. I think all the players, they were excited. They were happy to the way the stadium looked. So, uh, I mean, you can tip you had to cash and the whole team for, for that work. It was awesome. So let's get into the gameplay that we all witnessed over there. It absolutely amazing so many cultures even in the stands so many cultures conversing with each other and just being in one place was that like any you've been around baseball your basically your entire life and you've been a pinnacle of international baseball for quite some time was that comparable to anything you've seen before or played in you know it made me made me remind a little bit world baseball classic you where you see yes it's from Dominican, Venezuela, Colombia. That's what uh, remind me a little bit the games in Dubai. I mean, you're seeing fly from everywhere. And that's what it was cool to see. It was not only, you know, a resident of Dubai. It was, I saw maybe five, ten guys with Venezuela jerseys saying Artube in the back. <laughs> also a bunch of Dominican, Colombia, Panama. It, it kind of like made me think I'm here in Dubai watching baseball. I'm kind of like some play out. And that was cool to watch. You know, everybody who loved the game in this in this part of the world have the opportunity to watch professional baseball in Dubai. Bunch of people came out to me and say, man, thank you for bringing baseball to Dubai. You know, we don't have here. I'm from Colombia. And I don't have the opportunity to watch baseball. And now I'm watching here guys from Venezuela, Dominica, same, the same thing. They make you, 
and make you think, man, we we did that. You know, we bring professional baseball and give these fans the opportunity to watch it live where they don't have that before. So that was cool to hear the fans telling you that. Yeah, so while you were conversing with these fans, Robinson, were, was there any moment where you really were like, wow, we're like you're – where we really did this we really made this happen yes i mean i i think every time they were telling me thank you for you know uh bring baseball to the wide it made me think i mean this is this is something big it's no we have to be proud on baseball united and i know the guys keep telling cash you know great work i mean pretty much his team did 99% of the work when we came to Dubai, they were there for three, four, five weeks already putting the field in place, having the right people. And we can thank him and his team enough to the work they put to, to see that and have fans telling you, thank you. I mean, I'm part of Baseball United, but I don't feel I did their work last year compared to catching his team. But I'm doing my work now, and this year I'm going to be in ground working and make sure I earn my thank you really good. Robinson, how important to you is this mission of Baseball United to inspire <laughs> one billion new baseball fans? Made me chill to think, you know, it's unbelievable. No, not only have the opportunity, but doing it with the people we have in Baseball United. We have people, their passion, they love the game. I mean, they have so much knowledge in the game of baseball. I mean, you you were telling all the Hall of Famer we have in Baseball United. I mean, we have a group who is committed to do it and do it the right way. And I can be more more proud to to be in this team. And, and hopefully, not hopefully, I know we're going to impart it not only one billion, but hopefully more to watch the game, understand the game, have a uh, passion for the game, also love. I mean, it's a work. We understand to to learn and, and love the game. You have to understand the game. And that's something in Baseball United uh, we're going to do. You know, we, we're going to start from the ground up teaching the kid how to play the game, how to understand the rule of baseball how to be a good teammate and be and be a professional baseball player and that's what the teams want to do and I'm excited to what is what is next for Baseball United. So for anyone listening to the show that doesn't know Baseball United also brought in I believe I can't remember the exact amount I believe it was 6 or 8 prospects from different parts of the world in yeah. order to play alongside some of these ML former MLBers, but Pablo Sandoval, three-time World Series champion, Andrelton Simmons, four-time Gold Glove Award winner, Robinson. As someone who came up from Venezuela, you mentioned earlier in the show that you didn't really think you had a chance at MLB. As someone of that nature, how rewarding was it for you to see guys like Pablo Sandoval, guys like Andrelton Simmons, work with these prospects pre-game and during the game um, to just kind of te teach them the basics of the game that's what uh baseball united is about uh Liam, it's about giving kid an opportunity to be a professional baseball player and we saw that i saw that on the first row last year watching this kid getting into the game you know get his name called up and be maybe a pin run pinch runner and and working on bp ground boards and make you make you think you know we're doing the right thing here we we're giving uh opportunity to kid to be a professional baseball player and we're gonna have tons of kid that way this year next year two thousand twenty seven twenty eight we're gonna see a lot of players from the region achieve their dream to be a professional baseball player. And that's what made me into Baseball United, you know? Made me, I came into Baseball United because I saw the opportunity for this kid 
to to be a, a baseball player, a professional baseball player. And that's what made my heart saying, you know, I'm 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 going to invest in this uh, project because I'm believe in people, I'm believe in opportunity, and in being in this side, offering opportunity to players, it, it made me think. Uh, we're doing something really cool. Robinson, being a catcher your entire career in MLB, you're also kind of acting as a manager, especially when you're on uh, these younger teams. Cash likes to say often he likes to run this uh, as an elite sports team. With all of these um, elite owners in this ownership group, how in your experience has Cash um, – been able to manage all of them. I'm not going to say egos because that's not really the right word, but how has he been able to manage everyone and make everyone kind of mesh and be on the same page all the time? I think uh, it's all come down to communication. I mean, you were saying I'm a catcher. Or that's what I, I did when I was a player. To be a good catcher, you have to be a good communicator. You have to communicate well with your pitching staff, with coaches, managers, uh, position players, everybody. And I think that's what Catch is, is talking about when he wanted to treat this as a as a team, as a clue how atmosphere. You have to lead by example. You have to... Uh, communicate well with everybody and, and that's what catch is done you know he's he's communicating with everybody we have a group in whatsapp he's keeping everybody posted to what's going on you know what new we have and everything is happening based for united and i think uh you have to do it not because the ego or, or the person we have in base for united but is bigger in cash, and that's what I say in the beginning. It's not, it's not about cash. It's not about Adrian or Mariano or John or, or myself. It's about baseball united and the game of baseball. When we put ourselves to the side, work together as a unit for one purpose, to build the lead, do it the right way, do it with love and passion. Everything is going to be in the place we want it to be. And that's what the catch is done. And I think he's going to continue to do that. And and we all going to look back years from now and telling ourselves, man, we did it the right way. We did it with the right people. And look what we have right now. So I'm excited and ambition two, three years from now how Baseball United is, is going to look like and it, it made me excited to what is to come. Two, three years from now, Robinson, in your own words, what does Baseball United look like and what does success look like from the grassroots level of uh, these kids um, in the Middle East picking up a bat rather than a, um, rather than a cricket ball? We, we, two, three years from now, Baseball United is going to be, you know, on ground in every city, we're gonna have a team. We're gonna be working really hard with little leagues, teaching the kid how to play the game. We're gonna be doing a lot of community work, make sure people understand what Baseball United is about. We not only about the game; it's about you know bringing everybody together from little lead to parents to players, coaches, we're going to have uh, a lead or games every single night. We're going to have our team competing to win a championship. And, and we're going to be the best lead on the winter time between, you know, October and February. We're going to be the best wash lead in the whole world. I mean, Cash keeps saying this. We want to be the best league watch in that time period. And I believe we, we can do that. We're working really hard. It's not going to be easy, but I think we have the opportunity to be the league in, the, in that time of the year. And grassroots really is where it all starts, Robinson. Let me ask you something. When you were growing up in Venezuela, were there any big leaguers that would come to Venezuela and kind of mentor you guys, even if it was for a couple days, a week, anything like that? No, really. I mean, I grew up uh, Venezuela being this year with the second 
country with most big league active players right now in the big league. And always Venezuela been, you know, in the top behind Dominican Republic on professional baseball players. But I grew up kind of like in a small town where we only have two professional baseball players before myself. So it was not a lot of professional players coming into my town. It was a lot of baseball, a lot of little league baseball, a lot of kid playing the game, but not so much big league players on ground. It was a lot of uh, TV, a lot of you, you were seeing games on TV every single night, but no uh, major league players on ground. Venezuela is a big country. It's a big country and being far from the state, we have all the big league or pretty much all the big league on the middle of the country. I was far from the region and I was not able to to get to the players. But I mean, you don't have to be there with the players to love the game. You know, I was, my mom and my dad, they were taking me to practice, you know, two, three times a week. I was playing in the weekend with my friends, competing, understanding the game, learning the game. We have some good coaches when I was a kid explaining the game. And I think that's something in Baseball United we understand we need to have really good coaches to teach these kids, you know, how to play the game. I mean, we're not going to be able to be everywhere. I was telling, like, saying like myself, AV, all the professional baseball players. So we need coaches. They, they know the game to kind of work beside us to teach this kid how to play the game. So Felix Hernandez, Elvis Andrews, yourself, and most recently Ronald Acuna are now officially co-owners of Baseball United, the very first professional baseball league in the Middle East. How big is that for the country of Venezuela that you four are helping bring baseball to a brand new region? Exciting. I mean, where Venezuela is, is a baseball country. It's our first professional sport in Venezuela. It's the sport everybody loves, they're passionate about. I mean, I can tell you how many texts, how many Instagram messages I got when the news came out. I was a corner on Baseball United. Everybody was excited, you know, congratulate me to be part of something really cool. And also asking me, you know, I want to be in the league, I want to have the opportunity. A couple of days ago, I have a trainer uh, from Venezuela texting me saying, man, if it's an opportunity to work on Baseball United, I wanted to be part of what you guys building. So it, it make you it make you smile to to know people in Venezuela following you and also following Baseball United and they praying you know, Baseball United is successful for everybody. I think it's going to be, you know, huge for the the game of baseball, not only in that region, but everywhere, like Venezuela, Dominica, Mexico, all the players and, and personnel from this part of the world, they're excited and they want this to, to be great. Robinson, so when you were coming up through the MLB ranks, there weren't even as, there weren't nearly as many Venezuelan players as there are now. What can you say about the growth of uh, professional superstars in MLB from the country from the time you joined the league till now? I think, I mean, not only Venezuela, but you seeing the talent in MLB right now is through the roof. I mean, you're seeing guys that can hit ball 480. I mean, like Acuna, he guy can hit the ball so far and, and run so fast in the same time and make you, it, it kind of blow your mind, but it going to players on this thing now, you, you don't only need your talent, you have to work really hard to get better because the whole league is getting better. And I think that's what we're seeing. You know, we're seeing American players being the best they've been ever. And it's because players understand they need to take care of themselves. They need to work hard, hit the gym, 
uh, eat well. There, there is a whole package you have to do to be a professional play, baseball player. I tell myself every time when I was, you know, working, this is my company. You know, my body is my company. This is what I use every single night to, to go out and compete. The way I treat my company, that's the reward I'm going to have in the field. And I think players in this uh, era now understand they have a company in their own body and they're taking care really well. And that's what we're seeing, you know, guys from Venezuela being so good uh, right now. Robinson, so I do want to talk about uh, Venezuelan baseball. What would you say you go back to the country, I'm assuming, how often do you go back? Right now I'm going uh, more often to what i done in the past after I retire. Like tomorrow I'm flying from DR to Venezuela. So for spending two, three months out of the year right now in the, in Venezuela. Okay. So what can you tell me about some of the struggles that Venez Venezuelan players face currently, like younger Venezuelans coming up through the ranks, trying to get signed as an international free agent? Right now, I mean, the bigger issue we have is a lot of players have to leave the country to be able to have the opportunity for a scout to see them just because everything is happening uh, back in Venezuela. So they have to fly to Colombia because that's where they're doing these job cases also here in DR. So make it challenge for a parents or academy to move players. Then you, I mean, you have to have a big budget to move five, seven, ten players out of Venezuela. You know, that's hotel, uh, flight, tickets, food, everything. So I think that's the bigger challenge they have right now. And hopefully things get better in Venezuela. And, and we've seen the way it was when I signed back in 2030 teams that were there in Venezuela. Have academy in ground. Have a scout everywhere in the country looking for players to sign. So hopefully in the near future we have that structure again where players have better opportunity to be seen in Venezuela. So what can you tell me about Venezuelan success in these international tournaments? You mentioned the World Baseball Classic before. What can you tell me, at least from the time you joined the league until now? I think I was able to be on the WBC last year and we were so close man one piece away to get to the semi-final round uh we got beat by the U.S. and I think I mean you you look the league you look all the talent Venezuela have starting with Acuna right now I mean his talent is through the roof and we've been able to have that type of talent not every time because he's unique power really good talent from Venezuela. And I think the Federation in Venezuela is doing a good job putting a team together every time we have an international uh, show or international event. And but this event, they're so hard, Leon. I mean, we you're going into to the event, so it's only like five games to get in. There's a ton of talent for every team or every country. And sometimes it make it hard. I believe Venezuela have the talent to win a baseball world classic one day. And hopefully, you know, in 20, we have that opportunity and everything come together. You know, like I was telling last year, one pitch got away. We missed in the middle and, and, and they hit a home run. And that said, the opportunity went, went, went off, but hopefully in 26, everything go well for the team and be able to compete for the championship on the WBC. Is there any chance at all, Robinson, that we'll see you back on the field in 2026 at the <clears throat> World Baseball Classic? I don't know. Uh, we see where, you know, where God taking me. I mean, that's two years from now. They know the passion I have for my country. They know the responsibility I put in when I put that uniform on. And hopefully I can be in the staff helping, you know, achieve that dream I'm telling you, you know, being a, a 
World uh, Champion on 2026 on the WBC. How important is it for you, Robinson, to be a mentor to these younger players from Venezuela? And I know you were recently, recently this past spring training at a coach in the Orioles yes. system. You were a uh, guest. How important is it for you to go back and uh, mentor these young kids, especially a young team like the Orioles? Man, I think I learned so much from this game. And I was able to to be in different spot on my career to understand you know, the struggle a player go or, or maybe what a player need in some point in their career. So I think I have so much in myself to keep it with me. I love the game so much. Every time I'm going to have the opportunity, I'm just going to give back to the game. You know, that can be, you know, in Dubai with Baseball United or or in India or on Saudi doing some work. And also, you know, like you're saying, it's been training with the Orioles. They invite me to be a guest coach. And it was cool. It was cool to see most of the guys because I played with those guys back in 20. So it's cool to see the success they have in that organization. And I think I have a little bit into that teaching this kid how to be a good teammate and how to play the game understand what you need to do to win because when you get to the lead when you get to the major lead it's hard to to focus on the team when you worry so much on yourself you know you keep thinking i have to hit every night because i maybe get sent down if i go for four it's a lot of stuff you're going through when you get to the lead and when you understand that stuff is going to take care of yourself if you put in, you prepare, you're doing everything you can to compete in the field. That stuff is going to take care of yourself. But you need to to enjoy the ride and understand it's about winning games. It's about, you know, playing together and be a good team. And that's something I was able to to pass along to these young, you know, Orioles guys. And they understand now. I mean, seeing this year the difference what I saw in 20 is unbelievable. I mean, it's not a secret why these guys they're winning so much. I mean, they're they're a family. They playing together. They have their back each other. So it's good to see. You know, that seed I put in 20 is you can see it now. It, it made me. It made me smile when I, when I saw that this year and spring training. So that's what I'm going to do, you know, keep keep passing the knowledge and, and the love I have for the game to, to everybody God is putting in front of me. So as a catcher, Robinson, I have to ask you, we're talking about the Orioles. Number one overall pick, Adley Rutschman. What was your experience like with him this spring training? Adley is awesome, man. He's a good kid since he got called up last year. Not only call up, when I saw him in spin training in 20, I know he was a special. I mean, Orioles knew it too. He was number one pick in the round. Guy have everything. And, and, and it make a difference when he got called up to the big league in 2022. Then, and he's a huge part of the success the Orioles have. This year, we, we work a little bit. Some uh, blocking, he was blocking on one knee. That's probably something we're going to see him do a little bit more, being in one knee. So I told him a secret. Uh, it made me, you can say, a good blocker when I was in one knee. And I passed that along. He he tried. He said he liked it. And, and I'm going to see how, how he look in the game this year, uh, blocking in one knee. But... It was a good time being with him and the whole team this spring training. Robinson, so as we're wrapping up here, before I let you go, I do have one more question for you. When we met that day in Dubai, the first thing you asked me was how all of us, meaning the content crew, how all of us were being treated. You are such a, in my experience with you, you are such a genuine human being. Uh, it seems like on and off the field. Where does that come from? From home, you know, that's mom and dad telling me uh, that's the way you you should live your life, you know, treating people the right way. I mean, my dad always told me, you know, treat people the way you want it to be treated and, and make it make it different in people's life. That's what uh, that's how I live my life. 
uh, that's how I did and live my career. You know, I was a guy living by example, you know, loving my teammates, my coaches, and, and being being one guy, you know, in a good day and in a bad day, because that's something we all deal in. It's hard, you know, it's hard when you're going through a tough time in your life. And it's hard when you go, you know, off for 20 in baseball. You still have to, you know, be there and being a good teammate. And early in my career, Edgardo Alfonso told me, you know, let people remember you as a good teammate because you're already a good player. And that also is, is stuck with me my whole career. And it's true, you know. Stuff in the field is going gonna, gonna to be there, you know. You, you, if you are good players, your number is gonna chop. If you average player, your number is gonna chop. But being a good teammate is a choice you make every single day. Being a good person is a choice you make also every single day. And that's how I live my, my life. And I can, can thank my mom, my dad, and God enough for teach me, you know, when I was a kid, uh, being like that because it's make a difference in my life, in my marriage, and also being a dad in my son's life is making a difference also. Robinson, that's all we have for you this week. Thank you so much for joining the Baseball United podcast, my friend. I'm looking forward to the next time we get to speak. Yeah, thank you. God bless. Always here, man. Anything you need. All right, everybody, that's it for this week. Please like, download, subscribe, follow us at Baseball United, and we will see you next time. (laughs) 